Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we are delighted that you have tuned us in and welcomed us into your home. Well, we want to hear from you. So if you ha want to call, we would like for you to call 1-800-221-9460. If you're calling and you're outside North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. You can always send us an email, jimandjoy at ewtn.com. So we're thrilled. We're in Advent. Yes, indeed. Moving along, going down, just excited. Christmas is on its way. Sooner and sooner it gets here. And uh, it's just beautiful. And we pray that you all are centering yourself, preparing yourself for the great King of Kings and the Lord of Lords as we move through Advent. Well, we have a number of guests today. And one is Jean Hyman. And she's the author of the book, Fatima, the apparition that changed the world. So we'll be sharing with her. It's jeanhyman.com. And then we have Rob and Andrea Zeminski, who yes. just stopped by. So we're going to have them on our next segment coming up. And they're with Journeys of Faith. That's Bob and Penny Lord's apostolate. Mm -hmm. So they're part of the team there. And uh, with fond memory, we love Bob and Penny. They're part of the team there, as I said. And Rob is the only grandchild of Bob and Penny Lord. So yes, that's really so you want to meet him and his beautiful wife. Rob, yeah. Um, but, you know, thinking about uh, the book on Fatima, the apparition that changed the world, as we were beginning the season of Advent, there was a feast right before we went into Advent, the feast of Christ the King. And Bishop Foley was mm -hmm. our guest preacher at the cathedral at that time, and he shared the historic context of the Feast of Christ the King, which was Pius XI, who really felt that the church needed a feast day to exalt a Christ the King for our own sake, mm -hmm. not for our Lord's sake, because he's exalted already. And this was in response to the growing threats of communism and socialism, totalitarianism, mm -hmm. and any form of government that places man at the center as if he were the king. And Pius was saying, we need to know as Catholics, we need to know as Christians, that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He's the Lord of everything, mm -hmm. of everyone, Lord of the universe. And, and of every ism that's out there. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so we need to embrace this. And our reading that day before we went into the season of Advent was Matthew 25. And it speaks about uh, the coming age when the king comes and that he's going to judge us by what we did in this ordinary time. Remember that feast day mm -hmm. concludes ordinary time. And then you're moving into the season of Advent looking for extraordinary time, which mm -hmm. is the coming of Christ, the mm -hmm. nativity of Christ, the second coming of Christ. And that we need to focus upon this and be secure in our faith. And that we'll be judged on what we did with the hungry, with the thirsty, with the naked, with those in prison. And he was saying that there are various forms of government. They're not concerned about those mm -hmm. people. Right. There are people that are expendable. There are people you want to get rid of. This is where we get abortion. Mm -hmm. This is where we get euthanasia. This is where we get ethnic cleansing. Right. And so there are various forms of government, but Christ is the king. And we must be good citizens of the country that we're in, but our chief citizenry is at home with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that in the end, Christ will prevail. And so wonderful that we comprehend that we are just sojourners, that we are pilgrims. And our home is in heaven with Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Because sometimes you feel like this is not my home. Yeah. When you look at the world or you turn on TV and you see the condition and the way that we treat humans and you right. say, this is, I'm not this, and I was made for more, and my home is in heaven, but that we should live holy right. lives. Right. And what we do here on earth mm -hmm. has eternal consequences. And Pius XI was saying to every government out there, especially the communist government, secularism, you want to eliminate God, we will all be judged by what we do with the least. Mm -hmm. And the Catholic Church, the Holy Scriptures has the teaching on that, 
that we are to look for Christ in them and treat them as if they are Christ himself. Recently, we had the privilege with one of our grandchildren, yes. Isabella, who turned 18 recently. And so she was kind of bragging and talking. Well, I'm an, I'm I'm an, an adult. I'm an adult so now. Cute. I'm an adult now. I'm an adult now. And uh, she's just a beautiful, humble girl, got a scholarship off to college, athletics and academics. And I said to her, well, are you registered to vote? Miss mm -hmm. Adult. Are you she goes, I didn't know I had to do that. So I said, well, if you're an adult and, and raising our kids, everybody registered the on the day, day of the day they turned 18. So we, at breakfast, you handed them a uh, voter registration yeah, our kids, form. Yeah, our kids would wake up. We take a picture of them, and they have <laughs> yes. a voter registration form. Yes. And so we registered Isabella to, to vote, which was just fantastic. And she, and she so wanted to be mm -hmm. about that. And I couldn't help, since I registered her to vote, was to tell her, when you vote, vote life, the sanctity of the human person, and how whoever you're voting for will facilitate that. Vote life. Vote the sanctity of marriage, vote the sanctity of family, vote religious liberty. I didn't say necessarily Democrat, Republican, whatever. Right. I said, you've got to be out life, mm -hmm. marriage, family, religious liberty. And uh, anyway, I hope that everybody out there is registered to vote and that we're teaching that to our children because that's a part of changing the world. Mm -hmm. If you have the right to vote and people have died for our right to vote, we need to be registered, we need to exercise that right to vote. And as grandparents, if the parents kind of missed it, we as grandparents, and being that Isabella was the first one, we said now when we send your birthday card, and it is your 18th birthday, we're going to stick that in there, a voter registration form. Well, Joy, we have the great privilege of being with Rob and Andrea Zeminski, and Rob again is the uh, grandson of Bob and Penny Lord. We're going to hear about the ongoing ministry of Journey of Faith. Bob and Penny aren't physically with us, but that ministry goes on, and I'm sure their prayers are blessing that ministry. Don't go away. Plenty more to come. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, you're an important part of our EWTN family, and we would love to hear from you. So today, if you have a question for any of our guests, just send us an email, jimandjoy at EWTN.com, and hopefully we will use your question or your comment right here on the air. Well, today I bring to you Rob and Andrea Zeminski, who are over the apostolate and working with some other people on the journeys of faith. Do you remember what that is? Do you remember beautiful Bob and Penny Lord? Well, did you know that they had a grandson? They do. His name is Rob, <laughs> and he's here with us today. And he's going to share with us all about the wonderful happenings of journeys of faith and how that beautiful apostolate will continue and move forward and for the great work that they've done. Well, welcome. We're so excited to have you guys. Thank you. Thank you. We're excited to be here. Yeah, well, we good. Now, tell our family at home all that's happening with Journeys of Faith and what's going on. Well, it's exciting. It really is exciting. Um, we have uh, five of us right now that are the core of Journeys of Faith. Uh, Bob and Penny um, were my grandparents. Uh, they kind of taught me everything that I know. I started traveling with them when I was 12 uh, mm -hmm. to Europe. Uh, we have uh, Luz Elena. Uh, and Brother Joseph and Blanca that are down there. And Andrea and I um, made a decision uh, a couple of years ago that uh, we were going to come down and go full feet in mm -hmm. the water and continue this ministry because the, the foundation that Bob and Penny laid is so important and yeah. the message is so important. Yes, and uh, Penny always told me, she was, a, she was a great prognosticator. She said, she goes, you are going to do this one day. And mm -hmm. I didn't believe her then, but all in God's time. Yeah. And uh, so we are excited. What was it like? I mean, having them for, you know, your grandparents <laughs> and uh, the untold story of all of them. You mean you mean the time we were in a spaghetti factory in Sacramento, California, and out of the blue, somebody came up from behind our table and said, oh, "You're Bob and Penny Lord," and I, oh my God, yeah. be, you know, yeah. no, it was it was it was wonderful. Um, I was I was very blessed with them. Um, 
growing up. As I said, starting at 12, they said, why don't you come to Europe with us? And I said, mm -hmm. okay. And, you know, at first, all of my friends, what are you going to do this summer? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do I'm gonna play baseball. I'm going to do whatever. What are you doing? I have to go to Europe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, you know, but. Awful problem. Yeah, right? yeah awful <laughs> problem to have, right? But it was, it was such a blessing. And um, like many things in our lives, you don't really realize mm -hmm. it until later, the mm -hmm. blessings that you've yeah. had. Mm -hmm. um, but just from uh, the Eucharistic miracles alone, being able to see that uh, the saints um, had the, the privilege of seeing three different popes uh, in my life. Um, it, 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 you, you can't describe it. And um, it definitely changed me, mm -hmm. uh, gave me a greater appreciation for our faith. Mm -hmm. And as the time went on, and uh, Journeys of Faith grew, I began to truly understand what the message was. Mm -hmm. And um, I really think it's important, especially in today's time, mm -hmm. yeah. to, to yeah. keep that message going. What was it like, I mean, just personally, what were they like? They were grandparents. I mean, they just, you know, um, yeah. Spoiled him up. <laughs> I mean, honestly. And rightfully well, so. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I know when I ask how uh, many grandchildren, you know. whether it's the one, the only. <laughs> I mean, well, really. well, right, you know. Uh, but as I said, but of course, then once I got married, she became the favorite. I kind of uh -huh. got uh -huh. shoved uh -huh. off to the side. But, but then now... Our, our children became the favorites once they were born. Yeah, sure. okay. it, it yeah. passed. Yeah. It passed along. It, 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 was, it was wonderful. You know, um, um, they were just loving grandparents. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, the typical, my grandmother, you know, the typical Sicilian that was there. Mm -hmm. And we're talking earlier today about the, the Christmas dinners, right? Uh, every, every Christmas day, oh my gosh, there better be lasagna mm -hmm. and there better be fresh cookies. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, but these were all those memories. And, and even with, you know, God was such an important part of our life and mm -hmm. family was such an important part of our life. But it was never a, oh, well, you know, we have things to do in the ministry or whatever. Mm -hmm. They were always grandparents first. Mm -hmm. They were just family first. And it just blended together. And it was phenomenal. I absolutely love seeing them with our kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, they, they would get down on the floor and play trains or mm -hmm. trucks or color, you know, whatever it was. They were at the baseball games, you know, whenever they came to visit. Whatever mm -hmm. our kids were doing, they were right there with them. Mm -hmm. um, now, and they where were, was home for you? Because it wasn't in Arkansas. In, um, Arkansas, yeah, okay. right? No, no we're, we're in Illinois, Illinois, in the Illinois Chicago area. area. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. they, you know, as, as often as they could come up and visit, they were, they were there. Mm -hmm. And when we would go down and visit, I loved seeing um, Penny, you know, out there fishing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't yeah. picture that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to send a picture next yeah. time okay. of, of her out there with them. Oh, yeah. And, and they would just, they were the typical doting grandparents really that, and great grandparents mm -hmm. that anything their 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 grandsons would do mm -hmm. all it, you would have thought they hung they, the movie. they, yes, they exactly. won the Nobel Peace Prize right. and it was the best thing in the world mm -hmm. and uh, and it was beautiful to see that and it was that was so he was stating earlier you know over the years at the points you didn't get it and they they your grandparents and so on but the vision mm -hmm. of journeys of, of faith mm -hmm. and the components of it mm -hmm. for many of us we think of we hear journeys of faith and we just think only of the trips right. to Europe, different parts of the world, Eucharistic <laughs> miracles, saints, you know, churches right. and so on, which is so important. Mm -hmm. But what are the components? What's the vision of journeys of faith? It's, it's it, ultimately at its core, if it's mission statement, if you will, right, is, is, is to bring Christ, to bring the story of his church to, to the world. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in a way that is not uh, preachy, that is not um, you know, feeling like I'm, I'm having to sit through Sunday school again as a kid. It, it's really to be able to touch the heart, touch at, at the emotion in people's daily lives. And so there's, there's many different aspects that we do. Uh, pilgrimages to Europe, uh, those continue on each year. Um, um, Luz Elena spends a lot of her time focusing on those each year, bringing them to the shrine so that you can actually physically touch mm -hmm. and see and experience. Um, the books continue to be available and the videos and, and Blanca well, does that as well. And the videos um, are actually being updated. And the videos are all being sent New to, footage. to HD. Okay. HD. Okay. Okay. Yes. So they will all be HD. Okay. Um, we're also going to be looking to be able to add additional content going forward. Um, we also have a beautiful facility in Marlton that that includes a wow. retreat center, mm -hmm. um, includes um, offices and meeting a meeting hall. And the part that I just absolutely love is there is a replica of the Holy House of Laredo mm -hmm. on the land mm -hmm. um, where actually Bob and Penny are interned mm -hmm. in the bottom. But wow. it is a down to the, to, the, to the last rock. It is an exact duplicate. And really having been to 
the actual Holy House mm -hmm. in Laredo and then walking in through those doors. Every time it gives me chills, it brings me back to being there sure. and, and being in that place. So. Now, when Bob and Penny were alive, did people, people went there and went mm -hmm. on pilgrimages and everything? They went so there, So you yes. hope to continue with all that, right? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it, it's a peaceful place where, you know, for uh, retreats, um, uh, especially, you know, we, we've been, we want to be able to reach out to uh, high schools, to Catholic mm -hmm. high schools, mm -hmm. to youth groups, to women's groups, men's groups, mm -hmm. whatever it is, uh, to be able to come in and, and, and have a place of peace. I think that's one of the reasons why Bob and Penny chose that area and created it the way it is. It is, mm -hmm. it is such, you're able to really focus and communicate and connect with God. Right. And so we are available there to be able to do all of mm -hmm. those things. So whether it's something that a local parish priest, whatever, we're helping to coordinate or mm -hmm. You just would like to be able to experience that and come down. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, contact yeah. us and let it's us know. It's just such a peaceful area, and they have the Stations of the Cross um, around the Holy House, and mm -hmm. it just you can just just yeah. walk and just enjoy the peacefulness mm -hmm. of it all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really. And how much acreage is there? <laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, I believe it's a total of about 80 acres. Wow. So it's a it's mm -hmm. a very large piece of property at mm -hmm. the at the very very generous um, donation of. Um, Brother Joseph's family. Mm -hmm. It was his family in the, mm -hmm. in, for generations. Mm -hmm. And um, he graciously did that. And, and now this will be there for, hopefully, for, for perpetuity. You know, mm -hmm. we are just, it's, it's almost like Bob and Penny started the flame. Mm -hmm. We are right. the keepers of that flame. It mm -hmm. is, it's not about us, it's about that message. And we hope one day, when we're gone, mm -hmm. that others will continue that, that flame. Because we need that. Mm -hmm. We need that message that they brought. It's yeah. so important in today's world. And, yeah. and that's what we want. What you say is so true we think I think about it here you know mother Angelica who is larger than life right. yeah. um, and you know I guess I, I'll speak for myself I can't speak for everybody. but you know you, you kind of say uh, is this ministry based on mother Angelica or is right. it based on you know the Catholic faith right. and 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 leading lay people to really be active mm -hmm. all the different teachings of the church and and mother was never about mother mother was about the, the faith the mission. Right. and and you know her her illness and her passing and where we are now I mean the foundation she laid was really about this is about declaring the gospel of Jesus Christ this is about the salvation of souls this is about everybody having a ministry this is about the sacraments this is about and we've just gone on because mm -hmm. she and you're saying the same mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. right. that is endearing as Bob and Penny you know we always say when we grow up we want to be like Bob and Penny <laughs> you know? yeah. they're, they're just so great and they finish one another's sentences and it's so genuine their love um, but they weren't saying like this is about us they were saying here's our teaching here's the, the differences between the Catholic tradition and possibly other traditions mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. our brothers and sisters there but we're unique here here's the saints here's mm -hmm. the sacraments here's the church here's whatever and that's what you're saying you know yes. that, that this vision continues and who knows what else the Lord might be writing for journeys of faith. Right. That is very true. That is very true. Do you How have, many hundreds of all of the videos and DVDs have to be, you know, updated? How many did they have? They had they had a very <laughs> large quantity. I think over two hundred. Yeah. Oh I believe we are up to now over seventy that have mm -hmm. been digitized into high definition. Okay. And the work just the work just continues. Mm -hmm. I mean it's just it's a constant effort to get all of that up to up to date and get that for you know yes. for today's world and mm -hmm. and we also want it we also want to reach out we also want to reach out in other ways too you know we okay. want to be able to to go out and, and understand that in today's changing world some for the good some for the bad but right. with today's social media mm -hmm. right we want to start using that medium as well mm -hmm. just to be able to let people know hey we're here we're thinking about you mm -hmm. we have things going on you know as as uh, as Bob and Penny would always say, right? We love you, right? Mm -hmm. Hello, fa they would always say hello, family, right? Oh, that yeah. was their thing, hello, yeah. family. family. We love you, and, God mm -hmm. loves you. And, and that is still our attitude. We are family, we mm -hmm. are a family. And what happens with a family? God willing, families continue. That's families right. continue to grow and the next generation and the next generation. Well, if we truly are a family and we are a family of, uh, in God and in Christ and, and we are a family in a ministry, mm -hmm. How can it stop with Bob yeah. and Penny? Yeah. Amen. That's right. Well, I have an email that says, I loved watching all those shows by Bob and Penny Lord <laughs> put together. Is there any archival footage with which you may make additional episodes? And this is Lori from Fairbanks, Alaska. 
Well, Lori, actually, yes, we have thought about doing some of that, making additional videos. We also have thought about the idea of continuing to keep researching because there are many saints mm -hmm. in the Catholic Church, and we want to continue that going on. Um, but yes, absolutely. I mean, I would, any kinds of ideas like that, send them to us mm -hmm. um, because, you know, part of the problem is you get really excited and then all of a sudden you have so many things you need to do, you got to yeah. kind of bring back in again. But yes, I mean, it's um, definitely, you will be seeing always Bob and Penny in all of the things that mm -hmm. we do, just like here with Mother Angelica. Yes. Um, they are, they are the inspiration. They are the core, the rock of the of the of the ministry uh, that baseline that we all follow and then from that it's just yeah. to hopefully grow right. got yeah, we, were, we were talking in the green room um, just about the continuation you know, of this apostolate great apostolate mm -hmm. and I was just thinking because you got an educational background mm -hmm. working with young people Correct. and I said you know th this material this apostolate could really fit somehow, some way with younger people. Oh, like I'm thinking of homeschool moms or right. catechetical classes, and I mean the material, the the, the videos, the, the teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, this is stuff that young people need to to it not really only is. read mm -hmm. but to see because you know when you see these, and you connect with. Right. Well, you do, and I, right. that's a part of the apostolate. Is that it isn't only something you heard, you saw it, right. you really experienced it, and you said like, wow. And I think that needs to get into kids, mm -hmm. and they'll grasp the faith. Right. Um, the last grade I was teaching was second grade, and along with my teaching partner, we used to teach um, second grade saints is what we call mm -hmm. them, and we try and bring up whatever saint had a feast day on that day, and my teaching partner, her jaw dropped to the ground when I brought in Bob and Penny's, mm -hmm. you know, Super Saints mm -hmm. book, yeah. you know, all the series, and we were able to add to the things that she had, and it was beyond just a little coloring mm -hmm. sheet for the kids, but you could share more stories about the saints' lives with second graders, so sure. really it's it's for everybody. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. wonderful. They Do made it everything so real. I mean, you could turn on EW Chan and there they would be standing and they'd be telling you their story, yes. taking you to the site, right. you know, where they grew up or mm -hmm. what happened there and all the miracles. And you found out that they were just ordinary people mm -hmm. that God used in extraordinary <clears throat> ways. Yes. And oh, that's yeah. like, all of us, you know, so it's like we all want to strive to be a saint. Right, we're all called to be saints. We're all called Absolutely. to be saints. And you think, I can't do that. And they, and they were so beautiful with their Brooklyn accents <laughs> and how they would just bring it all home and say, yeah. and you can do that. And mm -hmm. it was yeah. so beautiful. Yeah. yeah it, That's it, what we want to do. Mm -hmm. they, they really did. They really did. They, they brought what I think at the time, especially when they started, was, was more of a mystery of the church mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and really brought it home mm -hmm. and made it personal. And, and that's really with all of us. Um, our faith is so dynamic and it, and it, is, and it is so robust and, and there's so much to it that sometimes it can be overwhelming. And I think, unfortunately, so many people wind up leaving the faith because they haven't figured out how to make it personal mm -hmm. to them mm -hmm. in their hearts, right? They, they know the motions. Oh, sure, I always went to church growing up, but how do I make that personal in my heart? And that's what Bob and Penny did, mm -hmm. was they were able to take that and say, hey, this is not some far off thing right. you've read and, mm -hmm. you know, oh, I can't touch that. It's No, 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 this is, this is all of us. Mm -hmm. and, and we are, we are all humble servants. And, mm -hmm. And, and that's, uh, that, that's the message that we want to just keep sending. One thing they did so beautifully was they shared with you how much they loved the Lord. Oh. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were so yes. sold out for the Lord and then they were sold out for each other. Mm -hmm. You know, and you just saw that. It was so yeah. beautiful. And you don't see that on television. No. You know, and there they were just standing side by side. I mean, she loved him so, he loved her so, and they mm -hmm. both loved Jesus with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. When, uh, when, when Bob passed, uh, we were all together mm -hmm. uh, in his hospital room. And uh, the thing that, that was uh, kind of brought us all to tears was he passed right before Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those, it was like, of course he was going mm -hmm. to, he couldn't miss right. Valentine's Day with mm -hmm. the love of his yeah, life. Right. And uh, yeah, and it was, it was just, it was they, I think from, from a taking away the journeys of faith part of it for a second, for me personally, as a husband, mm -hmm. they were the ultimate role model. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bob was the one in, in that relationship that said, this, this is what being a Catholic husband is mm -hmm. all about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't need to follow any other, right. you know, any other person, but, mm -hmm. but that, to be able to see that mm -hmm. and, um, you know, hopefully, yes. hopefully able to kind of could do this to some pretty big yeah. shoes to, to be able to, to fill. So. Robin. Andrea, thank you so much for being with us thank today. Thank you much. And thank continuing you. to share the great vision of journeys of faith and a personal word 
uh, about your grandparents. Plenty more to come on At Home With Jim and Joy. We'll be right back. Please don't go away. Welcome back. Well, remember that we want you to be a part of our show. So if you have a question for our beautiful guest today, Jean Hyman, we want you to send us an email, jimandjoy at ewtn.com, and hopefully we'll use your question or your comment right here on the air. Well, Jean, we're excited to have you, and your book is absolutely beautiful. Jean Hyman is the author of a beautiful book called Fatima, The Apparitions That Changed the World. You could go to her and send her an email, jeanheinman.com at her website. She's a blogger. She's been doing that for about 14 years, right? Mm -hmm. And um, But right now, we're going to talk about this beautiful book. Christmas is approaching quickly. Maybe you haven't gotten a book for someone you know would just so appreciate it. This is a beautiful gift to give. It's one. It's a smaller book that would do extremely well on your coffee table. It is just exquisite. The name of the book is Fatima, the apparition that changed the world. Well, Jean, we want to welcome you to At Home, and we're just delighted that you're here. Well, I'm really excited to be here. Joy. Well, good. Now, Jean, I want you to tell our family at home, why don't you tell, when did you first become so connected to Fatima? What happened in your life where you thought, I need to write a book about Fatima? Well, it started out when I was a child. I became very interested in Fatima after watching a movie uh, about Fatima. Mm -hmm. It uh, was the... Uh, I believe it was the apparition of Our Lady of Fatima, mm -hmm. and it was a 1952 movie, 52 mm -hmm. or 54, and a few years later I watched it, and I was like just intrigued with the Fatima message. It was about three young children who were not far from my age, mm -hmm. and that made me very interested in it. Yeah. Then later on, um, I. Well, my family was very dedicated to the Blessed Mother and had an interest in Our Lady of Fatima. And later on, I made my consecration mm -hmm. to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And I also um, became a member of the Blue Army. Okay. And tell us, uh, what is the Blue Army? The Blue Army is the World Apostolate apostolate of Fatima, which has a strong dedication to Our Lady of Fatima. Mm -hmm. They promote that message, uh, the message of Fatima throughout the world. Right. And so the Blue Army is a worldwide movement. Right. 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 And so where did you do that? Did you do that in your diocese or d how did you get connected with them? I did it online. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do almost everything online. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jean, as Joy was saying uh, at the beginning of the show, the book is unique and beautiful. Thank it's you. written very well, very understandable, but I didn't realize that it's meant, I mean, it's literally beautiful. I mean, it feels mm -hmm. great. The images in it are unbelievable. The, the, the pictures are just absolutely gorgeous. Um, and it is something that everyone should see. And as I read it, you know, I thought to myself, this is something I could sit with my grandchildren and read in parts or just kind of abbreviate it. But they would be so interested in all the beautiful images that are in here. And at the same time, to hear the stories that they would point to some of these pictures and say, what's that about? Or who's that child? Or mm -hmm. what's happening here? Why are those colors like that? And you know, who's that pope? And what's happening? So it's beautiful from a number of dimensions. So it's a real winner. Thank you. Yeah. Um, speak to us about the apparition of Fatima. Um, some of the key components of it. And I was sharing with you before the show that, you know, I, as a young boy, I attended Our Lady of Fatima Parish. Mm -hmm. um, I wound up wandering away from the Catholic faith for a number of years and then coming back to it. I don't remember, even though I went to Our Lady of Fatima, anybody really taking the time to explain to me, mm. you know, who's Our Lady of Fatima? What's that really about? When did this take place? All I knew was I was going to Our Lady of Fatima, I'm a Catholic. I guess maybe you, know, you should know Our Lady of Fatima. 
but I didn't understand it, and I'm still amazed, even though we're in the 100th year kind of anniversary and so on, how many people don't know Our Lady of Fatima or get it confused with mm -hmm. other apparitions. So share with us about this particular well, apparition. In 1916 is actually when it started, the Angel of Peace, or the Angel of Portugal, met with the three children and to prepare them for their mission, <coughs> to prepare them for the apparitions. The angel taught them how to pray and how to offer up little sacrifices for um, the salvation of souls, conversion of sinners. And the apparitions took place in 1917, the first one beginning in May 13th. And the last one was uh, the miracle of the sun in October 13th. So Our Lady met with the children the 13th of each month, with the exception of the month that they were in prison. And this is when she um, told them to pray the rosary daily, to offer up sacrifices and sufferings in atonement for sins, their own sins and the <coughs> sins of the world, and to bring about world peace and the conversion of Russia. Mm. So that, the message of Fatima is, the primary message of Fatima a hundred years ago as it is today. What is that message? The message of Fatima is to pray the rosary daily, in order to obtain world peace mm. and the conversion of sinners. And we still need that today. So that message that Our Lady came and gave those three beautiful children was to say, we need world peace. Well, here we are in 2017, mm -hmm. coming up in the new yeah. year, 2018, we still need world peace and we still need the conversion of sinners. And it's an awakening also of praying the rosary. Now, who was the Pope that really presented Our Lady of Fatima to the world? The, the Fatima Pope was yes. Pope John Paul II. Mm -hmm. The first Pope to bring about the message of Fatima to the, to the world was Pope Pius XII. Um, he made consecration, but it wasn't the consecration to uh, the Immaculate Heart of Mary that was desired by the Blessed Mother. And the consecration that she requested was to consecrate the world and Russia to um, the, her Immaculate Heart in union with all the bishops throughout the world. And that was made in 1984 by Pope John Paul II. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm took that long. Um, yeah. But yeah. you know, apparitions, the church really takes its time in right. saying, hey, this is, we believe this is legitimate, it's worthy of you know, veneration, we don't say that you even have to accept it, mm -hmm. but what's here is good, it's, it's, it's kosher, it's, it's a good thing. And so you, you can understand to some degree, mm -hmm. uh, some of the former popes saying, well, let's give this some time, let's see what's here. But as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I was speaking about Pius the 11th, who's around the year 1922 or so, and he created this feast day for Christ the King, mm -hmm. and his concern was uh, governments exalting themselves, exalting man, socialism, communism, secularism, which fits in so much with Our Lady of Fatima. Mm -hmm. um, so he was kind of on that same wavelength there and saying we've really got to exalt Christ as King and really know that as a church for the things that are already here mm -hmm. and for those things that are going to take place in his time a little bit later and then Pius XII who saw so much regarding you know war, World War II and World War I and it c continues to go on to this day. Um, you shared at the beginning that you were drawn in because you were a young child and that Our Lady and the angel before Our Lady appeared to these children. Um, it was really pretty heavy stuff that was being shared there, right? Right. You know, make sacrifice, pray for your own sins. They get shown hell, you know, or mm -hmm. images of hell. Now you know what hell looks like. Pray for people. Uh, pray that uh, for Russia, 
for the consecration of Russia to the Immaculate Heart of our That's a lot of stuff. You, you have further thoughts about children and, and why children being asked to do this and how they so gracefully were able to do that. Children actually placed in prison, you mentioned in passing. Mm -hmm. um, just some more thoughts about these children that were chosen and why children and why these three particular children. Your thoughts about these seers. These children were very innocent. They were, they came from good Catholic families. They were dedicated to prayer in their um, families, their own families, they prayed the rosary together as a family. And they were just uh, very innocent Mm. and good Catholics. Yeah. Well, I think they were really, they were pure hearts, right? Right. I mean, they were such That's pure hearts, right? Trying and, to say. Yeah, and there they were, and and she appeared. I mean, that, you go home and say, well, you just won't believe what happened to us out in the field today. <laughs> I mean, it was so, and their hearts were so pure. Why not believe them? Although they were persecuted and right. suffered much just for stating what they believed. We're gonna go straight to an email. It says, why would Jesus send his mother to poor shepherd children likely to be ignored? And this is from Anita from Seattle, Washington. Why do you think Jesus did that? I think probably because, you know, that's been typical of apparitions. Uneducated, poor children, innocent hearts, and... Yes. I think it's because just what you said, yeah. you know, people will believe them because why would they make up such a thing mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. order to be, and re tolerate all that persecution? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think of that scripture that also says that the Lord will use the simple to confound the wise right. and he'll use the weak to confound the strong, strong. Mm -hmm. and uh, you know God's selections are our selections. You know I don't know who we would have selected to have this apparition you know, appear to or come to them. You know unless we humble ourselves and become like children, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. And I think this whole message of children, especially in our own day, of our culture in America and in the West and in a number of other places, is so anti child. It's a contraceptive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. mentality. Mm -hmm. You know, don't have a child, you know, right. against having children. You know, a study just recently came out from a country that spoke about the environment. One of the greatest things for the environment to help maintain the environment is not to have children, to have less human beings. They're toxic to the environment. But, you know, this, our Lord coming to us, even in, in Advent, in Christmas, apparitions to children is saying, you know, children are at the center, that you have to humble yourself and become like them, have that purity of heart, have that simplicity of heart, because I want to speak to people like that, humble you yourself, become like a child. simplicity of heart and innocence is the child Jesus. <clears throat> yes. Well, I, they would pure and holy and blameless, just like our Blessed Mother. Right. And so there, their kindred spirits united, and it was like this happened to us. What makes your book so unique than the other books that are out there on Fatima? Well, as Jim mentioned, my book is has been referred to as a work, work of art mm -hmm. because it has it's packed with full color paintings and pictures that tell the story, that help to convey the story and maintain your interest. Yeah. It also contains a timeline of the Fatima events, starting from when the Angel of Peace began visiting the children in 1916 and ending in 2005, and um, when Pope Francis consecrated um, the world to the Blessed, the Immaculate Heart of Mary. In addition to that, there are feature pages for example, the one I have open right now is the Five First Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And there's other pages that feature the rosary, uh, how it started. And I also explain um, the different popes' relationships with 
uh, Our Lady of Fatima and the message of Fatima and how they reacted and what they did. And at the end, I talk about three different miracles of Fatima. Although there's many more, mm -hmm. I just mentioned mm -hmm. three specific ones that will help the reader understand. Mm -hmm. Joy, let's take this email and then I want you to share about some of those miracles that we might not have heard okay. about. Okay. Okay. You, you got time to look at One of the miracles associated with Fatima was the great miracle with the sun. It was documented in secular newspapers. Why did people of the time continue to ignore the message of Fatima right up through today? And this is Sandy from Orlando, Florida. So you have this great I miracle, think, why do they ignore it? Okay, I think part of the problem is because people don't really understand it. They aren't, they haven't been educated about it. Um, also, I think um, they don't understand the power of prayer. It's not something that is typically discussed from the pulpit. Um, it's something that you need to apply yourself to, you need to educate yourself on. Mm -hmm. But how many people there who witnessed it from their, for their own eyes, even they had their own conversions, right? So mm -hmm. some people went there, maybe not everybody who went there were believers. And there they had the miracle of the sun, how beautiful that was, and then they could go and tell and of the miracles of Fatima. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like the resurrection, mm -hmm. like somewhere, I think it's, you know, I don't know if it's St. Paul or who it is, but they said, you know, go and ask the people who, after the resurrection and what took place and people coming out of their graves, you know, go ask them mm -hmm. what took place with Christ's resurrection. Mm -hmm. And this miracle of the sun was a really incredible thing, a converting thing to believers and non-believers alike. You have a psychology background, and I was asking you before the show, you know, some people would say, well, this whole Fatima thing was just getting caught up in, in uh, you know, religious fantasy or emotion and, and uh, you know, it was a psychological thing. What do you have to say about that? Well, I think there's too many miracles in documentation, not only by the press, but, you know, there's a lot been written about Fatima that Make, makes you want to believe mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it has changed. You know, in my title of the book I mentioned, my subtitle is The Apparition That Changed the World. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but I lived at the time when the Berlin Wall went down. The Berl, I remember when it was built. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> yeah. And in 1984, Pope John Paul II made the consecration of the, ble of, um, of the world to the Immaculate mm -hmm. Heart of Mary. Mm -hmm. And at that time, um, shortly after that, it just turned the wor mm -hmm. world around mm -hmm. because you had um, the Berlin five years within five years the Berlin Wall went down um, and whoever thought that would happen in a million years the Cold War ended USSR dissolved mm -hmm. communism um, returned religious freedom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it was just a miracle that that happened mm -hmm. indeed well let's pause at this point we're going to keep you over for the final segment it's uh, Gene Hyman's book, Fatima, The Apparition That Changed the World. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come.
Welcome back. Well, you're an important part of our EWTN family, and we would love for you to join us live right here on At Home. You could be a member of our studio audience. Maybe in the new year, you're thinking, I would like to take a pilgrimage to EWTN. Well, all you need to do is contact the pilgrimage department, send them an email, pilgrimages at EWTN.com. Give them a jingle at 205-271-2966 and make that a reality. You could go to the shrine and visit Mother Angelica's resting place, and we would love to have you. Well, right now, we're going to go straight to Rome to hear from Joan. Joan, what do you have for us today? Well, greetings from Rome to all of you at home, and it's time for another DYKT. Now, that means, of course, did you know that? And I'm going to tell you today about an amazing activity scene, Presepio in Italian, that so few people know about, and yet it's just meters from where I'm standing in St. Peter's Square. And I'm talking about the nativity scene of the street sweepers of Rome. Quite an amazing undertaking. And again, it's in a very, uh, almost you can't observe it, building not far from St. Peter's Square, but illustrious people have gone to visit it, including three popes and St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Now, the nativity scene is really an extraordinary work of craftsmanship, started in 1972 by Giuseppe Iani, a former street uh, cleaner, now a retired municipal official. And what this really is, it's a huge representation of the hillside town of Bethlehem. And there's a few Roman things uh, that have been put in the scene, aqueducts and so forth. Now there's over a hundred buildings. They are ablaze with lights that are representing hearth fires and oil lamps in home. There's 870 stone steps, three rivers, seven bridges, and a 50 foot aqueduct made of pieces of stone from the Bernini Colonnade. You can see that behind me. The Bernini Colonnade was cleaned in 1999. There were some pieces of stone that were thrown away, but the street workers of Rome kept them and used them in this scene. Now, what is also exceptional is the base of this huge nativity scene, because this is made up of over 1,400 stones that visitors have brought from 150 countries around the world. Also in the base is a brick from the Holy Door at St. Peter's when the door was opened for the 2000 uh, year Jubilee. And also in this nativity scene, the door of the crib area of the manger area where the Holy Family is, that's made of wood from Bethlehem brought to Rome in 2002 by the keeper of the grotto of the nativity in Bethlehem. But perhaps most touching in this remarkable scene is the little crib in which the baby Jesus lay. It is composed of twigs from the tips of the brooms used by the street sweepers of Rome. So you got to come and see this. It is open all year long. It's on Via dei Cavalleggeri. And just ask anybody in the Vatican neighborhood. They can tell you to come and see this. So time's up here. Back to you at home. Joan, thank you so much. The anticipation builds for the nativity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Gene, it's been delightful to share with you, and I know you want to share a few words about the first five Saturdays, where that comes from, what is that all about? Share with us. Well, the first five Saturdays are very important because that's what we need to do to fulfill our part of Our Lady's message. The first five Saturdays on the first five consecutive months, for five consecutive months, we need to go to confession, receive communion worthily, and recite five decades of the rosary. In addition to that, Our Lady asks us to participate in, or to meditate for 15 minutes outside of the rosary, and to meditate on the mysteries of the rosary. And we have five first Saturdays because the five first Saturdays um, match the five different types of blasphemies that um, have been uh, offended Our Lady and her Immaculate Heart. 
so but we ha we need to hear about this, right? Because right. Some, sometimes you're not, you don't even, like I remember when I, I'm a convert and somebody was saying, I practiced, she was a third order Franciscan and she said, I do the first five Saturdays. I was like, what's the first five Saturdays? And she had to explain mm -hmm. it to me and where it originated from. But I didn't hear anything from the pulpit about the first five Saturdays. You don't, mm -hmm. you know, so how, how are the faithful gonna hear this? Jean's What's the way to us. get it out, right? Oh, yeah. We need to learn about it, educate it, ourselves on mm -hmm. it, and we need to spread the message. Just re real quick. So five Saturdays correspond to the five blasphemies. We don't have much time, but against, they offend Our Lady's heart. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you want to say something about any of those blasphemies? Okay. Um, the offenses are blasphemies against the Immaculate Conception, denying or ridiculing the Immaculate Conception against her perpetual virginity, that she had relations with Joseph or had other children, um, against her divine maternity, um, the implantation into children's hearts, indifference mm -hmm. or um, even hate or contempt, insults directed against her sacred images, displays of indifference or ridicule, and the uh, infliction or damage to them. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the great things about your book, that you have these special features mm -hmm. that are beautifully done, separated out from the rest of the book, and really helps you to understand the message of Fatima, what we need to be doing today. It's very simply written, beautifully done, very deep, a great a great resource and a great gift. Jean, thank you so much for being with us. It's been a rich discussion, and hopefully this will help lead us to the welcoming of the one who's coming, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. Christ will triumph. He will triumph. The Immaculate Heart of Mary will triumph. So there's no question about the outcome of this. God bless you. God bless all of your loved ones. May this be the best advent of your life. And may we all together see our Lord's face in his nativity and in his second coming, and may we not shrink back. Bye now.